love Ruby. It's the first language I turn to for doing most things, including writing little administrative tasks. But sometimes it's more efficient to write shell scripts in the shell's native language. Here's a story of one of those times. Now this Ruby script you see here is something I wrote several years ago to do auto completion of the rake tasks in the command line. And it's somewhat long for what it does, it's over 50 lines. And the, the core meat of it is right here where it's calling rake tasks and uh, parsing that and then uh, caching that so that it uses that for the auto completion uh, inside of bash. Now, when I switched to Z shell, I decided to rewrite this as a shell script and I was amazed at how concise it was. So in this episode, I want to show you the steps I did for uh, rewriting the script so you can get a feel of that yourself. Now I should mention that Z shell comes with some built-in rake auto completion already, but it's terribly slow. Uh, you can see if I hit tab, I'm still waiting for the results and I finally get it. Um, that's because it's not doing any kind of uh, caching of this data and it takes a while for it to fetch the rake tasks. Now here I'm going to be building onto what I did in the previous episode where I set up oh my ZSH and I have this plugin called rbates, which is automatically included. And this is where I'm going to put my rake auto completion. So I'm going to do this in a new file and I'm going to call it underscore rake because it's a common convention to uh, start your auto completion with an underscore followed by the name of the command you're auto completing. Now it's important that I tell ZSH by adding a comment here that this is a completion command defined for the rake task. And I can add some completion options manually by calling comp add and then listing out the various tasks which are available and I'll just place in some placeholders for now so that uh, we can test this out. And then if I launch a new terminal window, I can try this out by calling rake and then pressing tab, and then I get my list of autocomplete options that just work automatically. But we need this to be a list of real tasks instead of our placeholders here, so we need to end up calling rake tasks somewhere so that we can uh, fetch the tasks. But it's an awfully slow call, but this is our first step. Now this output needs to be parsed a bit because we just want this little snippet right here, which is the task name, not anything else for now. Well, there's this handy little command called cut, which does exactly what we want because it cuts out a selected portion of each line. And so we can use this here by calling uh, rake tasks and then passing it to cut, and then we can pass in various options here. One option we need to set is D to change the delimiter to a space because it defaults to a tab. And then we also need to specify the F option to tell it which field or portion of it to cut out. So in this case, we want to extract the second field, which is going to be the task name. And you can see there, that's our simple list of tasks. So that worked. So now instead of doing the placeholders here, we can make a call to that command. But for this to be captured in the output, we need to pass this into a dollar sign parentheses so that it's captured and passed into comp add. Now, every time you change that script, you'll need to open up a new terminal window for the changes to take effect. Or alternatively, you can call this command, unfunction, the rake function there, and then you can call the, uh, reload the uh, .zshrc file like this. And that will also reload that behavior. So now if we call rake and then pass in tab, it's going to take a while, but once it gets the uh, tasks, you can see it lists them nicely there for us. So that's working. Now to make it so this command responds faster, we can cache this result into a file. And we can do that by just passing it into a file. Let's call it uh, .rake tasks and then end in a tilde so that uh, it's signified that it's a cache file. Now we only want to do this if this file here does not exist. So we can check that by adding this if condition to make sure that that file does not exist. And then if it doesn't, we'll just perform that command. And then we need just to read from this file here so we'll just call cat there to read from it. And then that'll work. So we can try this out by uh, reloading that rake function again. And now when I type rake tab, it's going to take a while the first time when it's generating the cache. But after that, it's going to be very fast and just show me the auto completion results instantly. Now it would be nice if this cache here automatically expired when we updated a related rake file. So how do we do that? Well, I'm sure you know about the ls command for listing files. But there is an option here that'll help us out. The uh, dash T here sorts by modification time. So passing dash T here will tell us the most recently modified file. So we can use this by just passing in various rake files here. So we can pass in our rake file and any other rake related files in our project to get the most recently modified file. 
So inside of our script, we can check if this first file here is not our cache, then we need to regenerate it. And we can grab that first file here by just calling head and then passing in a count of one, and that will return that first file. So back in our script, let's use this command here to determine our most recently modified file. And I'll capture this output and set it to a variable here called recent. Now, inside of a completion script like this, it gets executed at a global scope, so it's a good idea to set this as a local variable here. And then we need to see if our most recent modified file is not equal to the rake tasks cache. Then if it isn't, then we want to uh, uh, regenerate the cache. So first I'll reload that function again so our changes take effect. And now it's blazing fast the first time because our cache is the most recent, but if we touch the uh, rake file and then we try running our rake command again, hit tab, it's going to take a while because it's rebuilding that cache, but then it's nice and fast again. Awesome. To finish up the script, let's just run a check to make sure that we're in a project which contains a rake file, because otherwise we'll just get tons of ugly output and you probably don't want to run the script elsewhere anyway. And that's pretty much it for the script. Uh, the behavior is quite similar now to the Ruby script I showed earlier, but it's less than 10 lines of code. I hope this uh, gives you some idea of the power behind shell scripting. That said, this Ruby script does add a bit more behavior to get the completion working in Bash, so it's not truly a fair comparison. I think both approaches have their pros and cons, and the point is, though, to uh, know your tools, that way you can find the best solution to, uh, that's most efficient for the given problem. Speaking of knowing your tools, I want to finish up this episode by showing you a few useful command line utilities that work great in scripting. Now the first one is find. Now I don't find this as necessary in Zshell because of its advanced wildcard features, but it's still pretty useful. Uh, the first argument it accepts is a path, so we could say the current path, and if you don't pass anything else, it'll just print out all the files inside of there recursively. And you can further filter those results by passing in some options, such as the name, and you can say anything that ends in .rb, for example. Now it's important to quote that so that it doesn't try to uh, handle that from the shell. So that'll print out all the Ruby files. And you can also pass another option such as a modification time, let's say anything less than three days from now. And that's the files that have been modified in the past three days. Now we can also pipe this output into another useful command such as grep. And uh, we can say, look for anything that contains production. Now this is going to look through the output of the find results, which is just the list of files. So it's going to output the one production file. However, if you wanted to search the contents of those files, there's a neat little command that can help out with this called exargs. And you can see that now searches the contents of each of those files. Now the way exargs works is it takes the input, which is going to be that list of files, and then appends them as arguments onto the command that you pass in. So this means grep is going to search each of the files that are passed in because that's how it behaves for the word production. Pretty neat. Speaking of grep, there is another alternative utility I prefer more, which is called ack. And you, if you have homebrew, you can install it with brew install ack. And then you can run it just in place of grep. So we can say ack here, and then it will uh, behave a little differently, but it has some really neat features that I find really useful. Another useful utility is sed. Uh, this is a stream editor, which means it's going to take the input and modify it. So for example, if we uh, take those list of file names, pass set into here, we can do something like substitution. So we can say replace production with uh, staging. And those are regular expressions you can pass in there. And then the output here has staging instead of production. And again, you can pass in exargs to this to uh, change the contents of the files instead of the actual names. Now the files themselves haven't been changed, it's just the output here that has been changed. So if you want to change the files themselves, you can pass in the dash i option, and that will actually replace the contents of the files. There are so many other handy commands as well, just to name a few. Uh, you have sort, you have tr, uh, there's com, there's cut, like I showed you earlier, there's also paste, um, there's diff, there's patch, and so on. Um, and also don't forget, the probably the most important command is man, so that way you can uh, look up any of these commands, just type it in and get the documentation on it. Now if you want more information on learning the shell, I recommend you check out this book, From Bash to Zshell. It contains uh, information on both Bash and Zshell, but I found it immensely useful when I was uh, switching over to Zshell. 
Well, this marks the end of my shell scripting story. So thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful.